The next stage is to remove um, parts in the front section of the clock that are preventing us to complete dismantling. The main time dial and its dial plate will be um, fitted with latches so they will be easily removed at the moment. We just have a um, screwed on dial plate and this will be changed. So it's a case of unscrewing the screws on the dial pillars. So there will be a catch on the top and a catch on the bottom and the dial plate will come off easily. Of course the hands need to be removed as in any conventional clock they fit it with collets. So um, And incidentally, um, as you see the clock now, um, well, apart from the bells, it will be largely as the clock will be travelling. So, um, we have here There's now the bills to remove, which are very simple. They are held on with a screw. It's a very simple matter just to screw them loose. Um, as I said, this is how I expect the clock to travel. Um, I think everything else on the clock is very amply supported and secure. Um, one point to mention is when we removed the, um, the calendar assembly, sorry, I'll put it back there. Um, there's one point that one has to remember or consider and that is that over here we have a cross arbor, this arbor, that is the driver to the calendar and that arbor uh, has to be fitted to a jewel when one assembles the calendar. So I'll remove that Here and it's over um, because as it is obviously you can't travel with it just hanging loose um, it's one point of the design that I could possibly say is a bad as bad or <laughs> not well thought out and it's best to just remove this, this gear from its collet to 
remove the gear completely from the clock. As um, it's rather awkward to rather awkward to unthread. And it's best as always to replace it immediately afterwards. If you leave these screws slightly loose, it'll be a good reminder of which side was um, removed and which side is left vertical. So if one needs to wants to dismantle the clock further, um, we then have to take into account we, um, the, the demonstration drive train that goes from the demo drive up to the calendar and to the equation of time um, is tied between the time train and the main um, centre section. So we have to remove the hand for the international time dial and then um, we have the worm drive that goes up to the sidereal time. This cock has to be removed. as it facilitates the gearbox removal. And as always, where possible, um, I replace any cocks or associated parts immediately. It's easier to recall where they go and also their orientation. Now with the modified feed pool, um, to remove the Robain feed pool, All that is required now is that the Robain, I mean the um, Remington carriage is lowered until there's access through between the spokes to the lowered pivot screw. It's only loosened a turn or so, so as to um, prevent it being totally held captive and the um, feed pool is lifted out. If any further work is to be done on the clock, um, in other words, if we need to remove any of either the, or I should say, any of the each of the um, the time or the center or the um, strike assemblies, this pillar and all its mechanism comes um, is separated at this point 
the centre section on this lintel is removed, which is essentially the um, escape wheel assembly, the drive to the orrery, and the rabane for the for the celestial drive, and also of course the pendulum supports. That all removes as one unit, and then the time train and its remnant were and the equation of time, as time assembly all remove as one unit. So to proceed further we have to make sure that any ties between each section, um, in this instance it's the gearbox, the transfer gearbox, and in the time, sorry in the strike section it's the actual strike mechanism and we'll look at what needs to be removed there shortly. Um, so the first item to remove, be removed to separate the time train with the centre section allowing the time train to be removed is the transfer gearbox and the two diagonal arbs that take the drive from the remnant wheel to the escape wheel. So the procedure we follow here is um, we'll remove the hand for the international time dial which is just a standard collet fitting and the dial which has still to be completed The transfer gearbox is held on at two points, um, the lower screw below the international time dial and it is sandwiched between the dial plate of the main time dial and the dial support pillar. So this side is already loose, so to remove this section all we have to do is undo the lower screw. Um, when we remove the gearbox, we have the diagonal arbor to the equation of time drive. It's supported at a lower bearing. Um, I have to fit a screw to this pillar in due course, um, which I would normally say remove this bracket, the lower worm drive cock, and that would allow us to remove the diagonal arbor. But, um, at this point I haven't fitted the screw to hold the cock in place, so we have to remove the gearbox off the upper pivot. Um, it is just brought forward slightly to release it at the um, time dial pivot. The demonstration drive gear um, is in front of this idle gear, so it has to be removed vertically. So once we've released it at both points, um, the front and back, it's gently lifted upwards until the worm drive pivot is clear, and then it is loose. So there we have the complete transfer gearbox. to be removed before we can take up the time assembly is the two diagonal escape wheel drive arbors and to do this you have to remove the two screws holding the front bearing box and by holding the bearing block and lifting the arbor, it can be slid forward and out. The rear diagonal arbor is removed in exactly the same way. Remove the two screws holding the bearing block. And the bearing block along with the Arbor is lifted and brought forward. This will now enable us to remove the time frame completely. Um, no other separation work is required 
Um, so if we had a problem on the Roman to a time train, this is as far as we need to go. Otherwise, we have to remove the strike link on the strike section. The first stage of removing the connection between the center section and the strike section is we have to remove the gear train across the front of the clock to enable us to access the strike levers. First of all, we have the demo input or the rear of the international time dial, and this is held on two screws. The, um, the calendar, sorry, the thermometer is removed in the same way. to the two screws on the main calendar cock from above and it is easily removed. This helps if one removes the screw completely. And the thermometer and the transfer gearbox behind it is removed. Then there are the two small gears, they are not strictly required to be removed, but for safety's sake, when one's handling this large assembly and then projecting below the bottom of the lintel, I think it's best to remove them. Again, it's too easily accessible screws. with the two gears removed. One item still needing attention is a, um, a bias weight or a, an unlatching bias to the um, to the trip birds. Um, that's why we have the piece of Radica in there. Um, the next item to remove is the, um, the two feeds to the racks, to the spike and time rack. So we have a um, taper pin and that the um, Strike feet four 
simply and the um, the quarters feed pool assembly is removed. Um, now we have in the way the um, the strike rack. The strike rack is held in place with the little keeper plate. The keeper plate is loosened and rotated outwards. This allows us to um, actually I remember now. We have to remove the strike rack um, crop fly. Here's the um, governor fly, control the strike, rack drop speed, and then there's a, sp um, a spring that is held captive by a screw, and we can then slide off the um, Strike rack. Once the strike rack is removed, um, there is an interlock lever. And then the next item to remove is the um, cross link, another interlock lever. It has a support which needs to be removed, displaced sideways. Then we can lift it vertically, and then we can remove the quarters. Pause. Once the quarter pause have been removed, um, the next item is the quarters rack. And there is a support bracket to um, prevent wobble on the diagonal feed to the facet that is also attached to the upper end of the governor fly bearing. The next item to be removed is the um, the 
is the quarters rack. Um, the, inter the connection between the release lever has to be taken out the way. And we have here a interlock roller and then we can remove the quarters rack. Once the quarters rack is removed, um, there is no further connection between the time assembly and the robain. Um, I would normally also remove the um, hour snail and this long lever because it is um, potentially in the way, although uh, it's quite likely to be damaged. So we'll have to, to do that, we remove the front two um, front two anti-friction wheels. Um, I'll replace this normal screw with a screw with Tommy bar holes so that one does not have to use a um, screwdriver at such a bad angle. Um, the screw holding the second pair of anti-friction wheels also holds the strike rack spring. Um, and this screw will also be replaced instead of a slotted head screw you'll have a Tommy bar screw second anti-frictional wheel assembly is removed. And then it's a paper pin and washer. And then the whole strike um, strike rack, I mean snail assembly is removed. And that's all that is needed before the main sections can be separated. This is the removal of the centre section, the upper, upper centre section. It's actually impossible to move the left or right hand sections without moving the centre section as um, there are wheels that are under pinions, this wheel being on the right hand frame and this wheel being on the centre frame. And the same applies at the rear of this arbor, mounted on the left hand frame, and a pinion at the rear of the centre frame. So the first stage in um, taking off the upper frames is to remove the centre frame. They held on by means of an eccentric clamp, um, tightened and loosened, and you can actually pull the pin out, and that is the eccentric clamp. There are four, two here and two at the back. So the first thing we have to do is to remove the four clamps. Then 
The only other fixing in the um, holding the center section to the lower frame is the um, the bolt that holds the vertical frame. This vertical frame it extends right through to the base of the clock, and it has a um, it's held on by means of a Tommy bar screw accessed through the back of the clock. So one has to put one's hands right in the back of the clock to get to this bolt. It is a um, it is a Tommy bar bolt and the same the same tool that we use for for tightening the eccentric clamps. The bar at the bottom is used to tighten or loosen the lower clamp screw. It's inserted um, through the lower lug on the center frame. So now we have the four clamps and the center bolt loose. The, um, the frame can now be lifted up. Now the lintel is located on two sets of dowel pins between the lower frame and the lintel. So what happens is we use a little um, wedge and you can slowly lift the lintel off the um, dowel pins or locating pins. Um, one other thing we need to watch when you are removing this frame is the diagonal arbor from the um, stripe train through to the facelt is this diagonal arbor and it is has a square fitting in a socket in the pinion. So as we lift it up that socket slides out. Um, so we'll lift the rear frame. fit as it's important to maintain um, alignment. multi-stage slow process um, as with most things it's not hurried Then we have the rear completely loose. And that is the diagonal rubber. 
Then we have the whole section separate. We can lift it out. And um, it is now placed in a holding stand. Um, so that it's safely kept and we can position and work on it. Or be kept out the way until we're ready to do the reassembly. To remove the time train, the um, removal process is even simpler, or a lot simpler than the, the centre section, with the same two, um, same two eccentric clamps that fit in at the front and at the back, and they're removed with the same key, so it's a case of fitting the key and all I do is I put a, a backward twist and then slowly rotate it backwards and forwards while pulling upwards and the eccentric pin comes out. Um, so we have the front and rear pins removed. There's no, there's no further um, items to watch for as we take it out so it's just a case of gently lifting it up until it's separated from the clock and we place it in the stand. Which means it's now again a self-contained unit. The procedure for removing the strike train, train um, is the same as the time train. Um, there's still one item, the diagonal drive to the facelt. We can just slide out. It's a square end, symmetrical. Um, we have the same issue with the drive from the um, chime down to its facelt. It has a vertical arbor. Um, behind this wheel and we just have to lift it off that at the same time as we're removing the main frame. The clamps are in, the eccentric clamps are removed as before. the same way. And then the rear frame is gently lifted. it's free, we can place it on its um, mid stand. There we have the um, we have the time train removed. The, sorry, the strike train. Removed.
to move the clock, um, we have a we have a carrying frame. Um, this is one side of it. It fits onto the main winding of it. To fit it, the um, blue rosettes are removed. And the frame is placed over the rear um, of the winding arbors and clamped in place. Then, in the front of the clock, there's a similar frame. And that is placed over the winding squares. screwed into the um, two bolt screws onto crossbars which holds everything in place. This enables the whole clock to be lifted. Of course with somebody on the other side. 